The Helen Sussman Foundation says that South Africa must follow the example of the government of the United Kingdom by dealing accordingly with Bain and Company. Earlier this week, London banned the consulting firm from doing business with the government there for three years. The foundation has also paid tribute to whistleblower Ethel Williams as well as member of the House of Lords, Lord Peter Hain, for lobbying for sanctions against Bain and Company. We're joined now by Nicole Fritz, director of the Helen Sussman Foundation. Nicole, thank you very much much for your patience with us. The acting DG of Treasury, Ishma Mwaniat, this week, speaking on a local um, radio station, said ba what Bain had done is akin to treason. This kind of utterance, does it maybe give you confidence that, you know, it will go beyond rhetoric to some action? Good afternoon. Uh, certainly the... Um, uh, uh, what has been said on the part of the Acting uh, uh, Director General for, for Treasury, Ishmael Mamoniat, uh, does um, suggest that we'll see real action and we'll see action equivalent to what has happened in the UK where Bain has now been banned uh, for three years from receiving any work from uh, the UK's Cabinet Office um, and that is for its role in the state capture um, period and specifically in respect of the restructuring um, and dismantling of the South African Revenue Service services and whilst we uh, welcome this move and uh, applaud it and believe that um, there are other uh, global jurisdictions which should be taking action against Spain um, because for instance Spain is headquartered in, in the United States um, it would be troubling indeed if the stiffest penalties that Bain earns uh, for its unlawful conduct here in South Africa were to be meted out by, our, by authorities other than our own authorities here in South Africa because of course the, the, the harm and it was harm of an enormous magnitude was felt here in South Africa. Mm. Nicole, have we neglected or maybe not emphasized enough the role of the corrupter? Because for every corrupted, you have the corrupter, right? So especially when it comes to business or the private sector in South Africa, which is oftentimes crystallized as the savior of the South African economy and can do a lot uh, you know, to save even the people of South Africa. But even if it's accounting irregularities on the part of many or some and a sizable number of uh, private companies in South Africa to those who have been found to actually be the corrupter. I, I mean, I think that that's absolutely right. And, and it's a complex kind of lens that, that we have to direct at a phenomenon like state capture. Obviously, public officials have taken office um, and, and sworn a, an oath to, to act in, in the interest of the, of, of the public and so their responsibility to the, the public is large and so when they're using their access to public funds in order to enrich themselves, that is a particularly egregious uh, conduct on their behalf. But, but you're absolutely right, um, you know, that this type of uh, corruption uh, doesn't ha happen without uh, those um, providing incentive to engage in the corruption and, and it's often actors in um, the private sector and in, in the corporate sector and in this case when we're dealing with an actor like Bain and company um, held up as a kind of blue chip prestigious consulting company uh, and yet uh, we know that they set about long before they actually won the contract um, from the South African Revenue Services they, they set about sort of um, looking to to elicit uh, that work and in fact creating work that was of no real benefit uh, to South Africans and in fact in, in the case of the South African Revenue Service we had a, a world class institution that had been performing exceptionally, in fact it was looked to around the world as a model of revenue collection and what they did was essentially break our, our revenue collection authority um, and, and dismantled it and its capacities and it's not just about breaking that institution, it essentially meant that that, um, uh, that money which would have been collected, so there was a, a as a result of, of breaking SARS, there was a shortfall in revenue collection and, and 
those who were most vulnerable and poorest in South Africa, who were most dependent on government for social services, would have been most acutely prejudiced because that money just simply wasn't then forthcoming. Um, and we also had a sort of um, an increase, an exponential increase in sort of illicit activity as a result of hollowing out of, of, of SARS. Um, and I think it is absolutely right that we shine a, a sharper focus on the role of the, of the, the corporate and, and private actors um, in, in the phenomenon of state capture. Thank you very much for availing yourself this afternoon. Helen Sussman Foundation Director, Nicole Fritz.